Bienvenidos a Tucson, eh, bienvenidos a Baja Arizona, that's what we call it here in Tucson. So um, I find it very interesting that we have, uh, hablo un poquito de español, pero nada mucho. I will, I'll try to speak a little bit of Spanish where I can. Um, I just find it very interesting this, the, to have such a, a diverse group from 10 very important states and we're treating ourselves as 10 states and not four American states and, you know, six Mexican states. Um, just out of curiosity, um, I would like to know where people are from, if it's okay with you. ¿Cuántas personas son de, de Baja, California? Baja, okay. ¿Y Sonora? ¿Y Chihuahua? ¿Y, let's see, Coahuila? All right, three from Co Coahuila. Nueva León, a couple from Nueva León, <laughs> y Tambal Tamalimpas. All right, very good. So we're, all the states are represented. How about Texas? All right, uh, Nuevo Mexico, California, and then the rest are, oh, Colombia. Where's the guy from Colombia? All right, there, okay. So he gets the prize. So anyway, that's, that's really important that we get to know each other. Um, I hope you have a good time in Tucson. Uh, we have a lot of important uh, new facilities to see. And if you take the modern streetcar, that's a good opportunity to see all the development that's happening in downtown and, uh, of course, the university. And uh, maybe tonight, uh, tenemos una fiesta. <clears throat> so downtown links is a, is a large uh, corridor project that began in the 1980s. It's taken us 30, almost 40 years to get to this point. <laughs> um, it started out as a project managed by the Arizona Department of Transportation, that's the, the State Transportation Department. It was a six lane freeway bypass, that was the design. And shortly after they designed it, they built about half of it. And the other half was to go through downtown Tucson and then to uh, Alta Pista Diez. And during that time when they presented this last design for this freeway, the uh, people in downtown, the, the residents and even the city officials and the business officials, they said, no way. We're not going to have a six-lane freeway that's going to cut through our downtown. So the project totally stopped. And um, in the 1990s, there were two more plans to do a, a similar road, not quite a freeway, but almost looking like a freeway. And after 10 years of planning, it didn't go anywhere. And so downtown Lynx is actually the fourth effort to plan this bypass in, in downtown. And uh, I'm happy to say that we are making some progress with, with this project. So I'll give you the details here. Um, first of all, I want to give you a, 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 uh, an, an idea of the geography of central Tucson. You saw some of these pictures earlier from Brad and the other presenters. Um, Tucson, is the valley is about 15 miles long and maybe 15 miles wide. And it slopes, so the, the watershed, as the, like the maps that uh, Brad presented, there's many watersheds. The water flows to the west and it flows to the north. And in central Tucson, we have uh, the area over there to the right, in this, this general area, this is the watershed that feeds into the downtown area. Most of that water flows into the Tucson Arroyo. And there's also another small arroyo, uh, we call that high school wash, because it goes under a high school. And that flows into the Tucson Arroyo and then eventually to the uh, Rio Santa Cruz, which you can see in the bottom there. So the Rio Santa Cruz, that's where Tucson started as, as a civilization. And over those thousands of years and the last 100 years, the city has grown from the west to the east. And for better or for worse, we have a lot of development uh, that has created a lot of flooding that goes down the Tucson Royal. 
Some of the other issues that we have uh, is the railroad. The railroad came in the 1880s. It connects Los An <coughs> excuse me. It connects Los Angeles with El Paso. <clears throat> and over the time, it, it has segregated the downtown area from the rest of Tucson. We have some underpasses. Uh, we don't have any bridges, but we have some underpasses that go under the, the railroad, but those were built almost 100 years ago. And so now we're dealing with the problems with uh, traffic congestion and things like that. Uh, Autopista 10 está aquí, sur a México, norte a Phoenix. And these lines represent the two arterial roadways that pass through downtown. So being that this is a transportation project, one of our goals is to try to um, improve the connectivity and the flow of traffic from the east side of Tucson for all the people that are trying to go to the west side. We don't have another freeway out here, and it's a good thing we don't, personally. But the freeway is here, so if you live anywhere in this area, you have to drive west. Or north. This is another map of the area and uh, the same uh, conditions uh, which I'm, I described to you earlier. Now we're looking west and let's see, whoops, wrong arrow. So these are the arrows, these are the arterial roadways coming right in. <clears throat> the uh, photo in the upper right, um, the, the point of this photo is to show you that Downtown Tucson is not very big. It's not an El Paso, it's not a Juarez, it's certainly not a Tijuana or a San Diego, it's very small. And um, with all these other features here, the, uh, for example, the railroad here and the freeway here and the drainage, it makes it very difficult to do new infrastructure. And that's part of the, the controversy over the, the many years. Here's another photo of downtown. Um, these are the four big challenges for us. <clears throat> we have about 45 trains a day. Uh, similar, I know uh, Nogales has problems with the train. There's, there's eight trains a day from Nogales that come up to Tucson. Um, El Paso has problems. These trains go to El Paso, they go to Los Angeles. We have many delays in our downtown. And if you do the, the uh, math, you multiply 45 trains times about five minutes, and that's a lot of delays throughout the day, especially in the downtown. We've had fatalities. Uh, these uh, crossings right here are not, not, they're not underpasses, they're at grade. And this is where the fatalities occur in both of these locations. This is the Lago de Tucson right here. Uh, the, it's called the uh, Stone Avenue underpass, and this is what happens uh, during the uh, monsoon seasons. Um, this guy is having fun uh, paddling around in there. Uh, that's not how we do water harvesting. We want to do it in other ways. <laughs> uh, we also have the traffic circulation problems. When the train comes by here, all of these cars, they decide to, to go through here very fast go through stone, and then they go another way. Um, so it's not very safe for bicycles and pedestrians either. And then we also have, this is an old industrial zone, uh, typical for a rail corridor because of all the industrial um, activity. There are some beautiful historic buildings, uh, some of them which we're trying to preserve, and then there's some others that aren't so great and uh, they just haven't been invested in, and we're, we're having to uh, remove those. So the project goals between the 1980s and today, the, uh, there's been a major shift in transportation planning. I think everybody knows that um, in, in Mexico también. Um, it's not just about roads anymore. There's many things that are associated with road construction. And so we're having to think very differently about how we do road projects. There's obviously the drainage 
Um, we have to worry about historic preservation. We have to worry about uh, economic development. We have to worry about the safety of, of the neighborhoods, et cetera. So during those last 30 years, we've had to change our goals for this type of project. Uh, the top goal is to improve the multimodal capacity, connectivity, and safety. Again, it's not just about building a six-lane road or a four-lane road. It's about building a road to serve all users, including bicycles and pedestrians. Uh, we, we want to improve the rail crossings. Uh, improving the drainage system is, is a big part of this project. It's probably a third of all the money goes towards the drainage. <clears throat> we want to improve the image of the corridor. So uh, we have native desert landscaping. Uh, we're going to do some environmental cleanup. And we're trying to implement our sustainable design guidelines um, with the goal of uh, reducing, reusing, recycling. And we have public art. And then after the road is all built, we want to be able to put the corridor back together again with the land uses and promote some other land uses. Instead of industrial use, we want to do housing and shops and some other things. So after uh, we started the planning for Downtown Links in 2005, and it was three very long years um, of meetings with the public they were very difficult because a lot of people did not want this road because of the history of it and for what it represents. Um, and I know that I was not part of all of those meetings, but I went to a few and they were very difficult. Brad was there uh, representing his neighborhood. Um, they have their own interests and it's just part of the process. Um, so after uh, in 2008, after three years of, of meetings and looking at different concepts, we adopted a roadway alignment uh, that was approved by mayor and council. And it wasn't, nobody was totally happy, but everybody was satisfied. And since 2008, we've had to work very hard on design of this to, to get all the details finished. So basically, the, the road starts here, here's Autopista de está aquí. And this is um, an existing uh, St. Mary's Road, existing road that cuts through here. And this, this is uh, Avenida Broadway in downtown. We have a lot of uh, congestion, traffic congestion right here. So the concept for the road is to offer an alternative connection from here along the railroad tracks to uh, 6th Street. And then at, at 6th Street, uh, it will go under the railroad tracks and then out to um, Autopista Diez, right here. There's drainage. Um, we have landscaping. We have, it's a very complicated project. This is the most complicated project in the region. Uh, we've never done anything like this before. So I'm going to have to move ahead. Uh, we're doing it in three pieces because we don't have all the money sitting around. So we build, uh, we built the first phase, the second phase. The first phase is all this drainage right here, which I'll show you pictures of. The second phase was this piece of road. And the third phase is the rest in the blue. <clears throat> So the scope of work for um, our consultant, um, Brent uh, was sick today, um, the engineer that's working on this. <clears throat> this is what his challenge is. The uh, project was part of the Regional Transportation Authority plan that was approved by voters in 2006. And that's really where the money came from. Um, and then the project became a lot more serious after that. But basically, we have um, a new roadway corridor. It's four lanes with bike lanes and sidewalks, uh, drainage improvements. We have an underpass under the, the railroad tracks. We have a, a deck plaza, which uh, I'll describe to you in a minute. We have native desert landscaping and water harvesting, everything that you've uh, seen in the first few hours this morning, and public art. The budget for the project is $85 million. Most of the money came from 
the uh, RTA uh, through a regional uh, sales tax. So when you go and you buy something today, you're helping contribute to pay for this project. Um, and then we have some state monies as well from the state gas tax. So this is the floodplain in our area. Um, this is uh, Tucson Arroyo. This is High School Wash, and they converge right here. This is a very popular uh, shopping district. Uh, we call that uh, Fourth Avenue. The, so this was uh, six years ago. We had these problems. The cars were floating down the road. Lots of things were floating down the road, and it destroyed a lot of merchandise in the businesses. So this is what we're trying to prevent. <clears throat> and then you can see that it continues on uh, right out to uh, the Rio Santa Cruz. So the 8th Street drainage project, um, we had never done a project this big before, and <clears throat> we were able to work with a contractor that rather than develop one large section of concrete with, with, uh, with steel, we decided to work with them to do these pieces. And it went much faster. And most of you know that when you do a project in your city like this, it's very disruptive. It's very difficult for traffic. It's very difficult for, for business. And so we don't want to delay people. We want to keep the city operating every day. So these were manufactured in Casa Grande, uh, La Ciudad de Casa Grande, Norte de Aquí. And they were sent down to Tucson in pieces. Each piece is about six feet long, this way. And then together, uh, 12 feet and 12 feet, 24 feet wide. We have an existing canal, but it's not big enough. This one is big enough to meet the 100-year uh, flood uh, regulation. <clears throat> so this is the system that we put in right here uh, in the orange. And everything is underground. We don't have any flooding problems today. Uh, phase two is St. Mary's. And um, this was about a half a mile or, or six blocks of a project. We started to implement sustainability goals uh, for this project, um, mainly because of the, the push from the community. And it's people like Brad uh, Lancaster and his neighbors and the people at the university that got the transportation department to focus on sustainability. So this didn't really come from our department. It came from all of the talented people that, that kept pushing on us. And sometimes it was hard. But we reused the concrete. Um, so we used the concrete pieces for the uh, drainage. So we're pulling water from, all this, from the street. It flows in here and feeds the uh, plants. And we have native desert vegetation. The existing asphalt was reused. Uh, we actually, the contractor, he took up the old road and he crushed it and then he put that down for the uh, base. And I don't know how you say in Spanish, but it was the base course and then you put the new asphalt on. So we tried to use the materials on the site and, and recycled them. Um, LED lighting, uh, water harvesting, and um, uh, bike lanes, this is the first protected bike lane in, in Tucson. Uh, we, have, we have the biggest bikeway network in the United States here. Um, but we're learning to do things a little bit better. Uh, more photos of the water harvesting. You can see the, the drainage here coming from the street um, right into the basins. Um, these are the old um, curbs from the road. This is the old sidewalk. And some of the rock is the old, the, the pieces of concrete, the smaller pieces. The contractor, he ground that up on site and we used it for the, for the landscaping. Uh, some benches right here, we used the concrete. And this was an example of um, uh, pervious concrete. Um, I think one of the presenters is gonna be sharing 
a material like this. The water can flow through that. So uh, that was a phase two. Phase three, this is the most complicated of all. Um, but I want to point out to you the, the dark blue right here. This is the um, uh, how do you say that? Drenaje grande. So this is the biggest one right here. So it begins where we left off and it goes out to this piece. We have to do that first because it's underneath. Then we do the other, the smaller ones right here. So we're taking water from the streets. The green is the road. The purple is a new bridge uh, for, the, for the railroad, uh, Union Pacific Railroad. This is the deck plaza. And we did not have plans to do this originally, but uh, there was so much opposition from the neighborhoods and from other people downtown. They said, we don't want a big road to separate us. We need something. If you want us to support this project, we need some bigger connection to uh, keep the neighborhood and the, uh, and the downtown together. So I'll show you some pictures of that. <clears throat> uh, we're also recycling. When we take down buildings, we're trying to recycle the materials. Uh, this is uh, one of the buildings that was, down, that was taken down. Unfortunately, there's some of these that are historic. They're right in the path, and we had to demolish those. The contractor recycles all the metal. Um, the contractor also uh, recycles some of the bricks. We are keeping some of the bricks to do some walkways and um, some other some landscaping features. Uh, there was an old water harvesting tank. Um, it looks pretty pretty ugly there, but um, we're going to make use of that. We're going to put that somewhere in our corridor project to. It's not so much about the look of it, but about the function to help educate the community on what water harvesting is. <clears throat> so this is an example of the uh, uh, rendering of, uh, this is the existing uh, Avenida Calle 6 de Autopista 10 aquí a, a, a este, a la Universidad de Arizona. There's about 25,000 cars a day that go through here. And then there's 45 trains a day that cross. <laughs> so our project includes this, this underpass right here. The trains are above. Uh, we have bicycle lanes. We have sidewalks. We have landscaping. Um, the deck plaza is on the other side, uh, looking the other direction. Um, it's basically a bridge but we're going to do some native desert landscaping up top to give it the feel that there's a connection with both sides. Um, another photo of the top. Um, this is our design for the, the deck plaza. It's going to have a ramada to try to rebuild the sense of community that we are removing uh, during the construction. And we'll have uh, native desert uh, landscaping as well. Um, this is a photo of uh, the bridge for the bicycles and the pedestrians near downtown. This is not the final design. This is to show you the structure. And uh, also what's important is, is that the, this is a historic underpass, the, the one with all the, the water in it. The State Historic Preservation Office does not allow us to, to um, cover up the facade. So that's why this is important. We had to show this to the State Historic Preservation Office. The bridge has to be above the, the vista when you're driving through. Um, another photo of the future um, overpass, Maclovio Parasa. He was a famous union leader in Tucson. And so part of the, the project is to name the road after him and his uh, family. But the, the photos are good because when you have a lot of people that are in opposition to these projects, they don't understand what it looks like in an engineering document. And so we had these made and everybody had a better understanding of that. 
And uh, lastly, this is a photo of uh, the existing uh, Barasa Aviation Parkway, uh, Avenida Broadway, that goes into downtown. And this is the new project that we will do for the connection. Uh, the next steps, we're going to finish design next month. Ten years of planning and design, and we're almost there. <laughs> um, we have to acquire some more properties, and we have to move the utilities. And this is very important. Uh, most of you know this for your projects. It's very complicated when you have to deal, deal with the electric company, the water company, the gas company, the cable company, and, uh, oh, and the sewer company. <clears throat> and then we hope to begin construction in about a year from now. So uh, hopefully you'll come back at that time and we'll see, the, see some action. Uh, these are examples of the artwork. Um, this, is, this guy, those aren't hoses of water. That's, that's only spray of water. Uh, it's a giant bicycle wheel, so we'll put that on the path. And when you ride through uh, the... Uh, the wheel that you can get sprayed by the water and cool off. And it is part of uh, our water harvesting because it's right in the landscaping. Some other interesting things. This is a concrete uh, panel. This will be images of people in our community that will be integrated into the panel. And that will be about 20 feet tall, about as high as that wall in the back room there. So when you drive down the street, you won't see the image at first, and then as you get closer, you'll see the image, and then it disappears again. So it's a, it's a new technique from, some, uh, from Germany, actually, but there's some local artists that are using it. So that's about it. Um, we have a website, CTL uh, Web, um, is uh, downtownlinks.info. We have a lot of maps. And then you can email me if you have more information. And I hope to meet a lot of you. I'll be here today, and, and I hope to see you tonight. Thank you, Tom.